For those of you guys that may not know, I've been fighting a demon over on this car for the past few months already. And it's driving me absolutely fucking crazy. And to catch you guys up to speed for the past few videos we already ended up posting, I'm actually dealing with a P0053 code over on this car. And for those of you guys that don't know what a P0053 is, it's a Bank One Sensor One Heater Resistance Code, which is on the passenger side of the car. Pretty much what that is telling me is the fact that my O2 sensor is not reading with the car. So whenever I do start the car up, it sounds like a sick ass pig. Oink. It's just grumpy, it just hardly wants to run, and it just sounds like shit. Then it goes back to complete normal operating procedures. Now, how do I know that this is an issue and it's not just replacing the O2 sensor? One, I swapped it from one side to another to see if the code followed, and it didn't. Two, I ended up buying a new O2 sensor. That didn't do anything, and especially since if that was wrong and that's the side to replace, moved it over here on the side that's actually correct, then that means that O2 sensor is still good. I checked the resistance within the O2 sensors, and they were all read around 3.7 ohms. Even the one that I thought was bad still read 3.7 ohms so that tells me the o2 sensors aren't the problem and then also on top of that as well i checked with the test light over on the wiring harness and it showed that it actually was working whenever i did the, turn the ignition on and the heater light actually was flashing what you wanted to do and i also checked the voltage as well and there was voltage within the system excellent i ended up buying a wiring harness for the car and you might be asking why did you go buy a wiring harness have you tested everything you checked with the multimeter you checked with the test pens you checked everything why would you buy something that you're pretty sure isn't the issue even though it tested correctly? The reason why I did that is because there might be some resistance within the wire that I can't see. So I want to go ahead and replace it with a brand new harness, see if I can get, completely eliminate this issue once and for all. And the other reason why too is that one night I actually shook the wiring harness with the car running and ended up finding out that my air to fuel ratio started working once more because that was one issue I've been dealing with for quite some time already because my air to fuel ratio stays stuck at 14.0 at all times, no matter if I'm starting it up or if I'm driving driving, I can be slamming on the gas, it's still stuck at 14.0. There is something wrong with the system where it's not getting an accurate reading, and I know the car is running fine because when I am driving the car, everything acts completely normal. Because when I have plugged in my O2 scanner, it did show me there is reading over on this side, there is reading over on the back, downstream ones, and there's no reading over on the right one. So with that being said, when I did shake that wiring harness and the air to fuel ratio started working not once, but twice, after that I couldn't replicate this bullshit ass issue. So that's what makes me think maybe there's a pin or maybe there's a frayed wire wire inside the wiring harness that I cannot tell. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that once and for all. And so that's the reason why we ended up picking up this wiring harness for $173 out the door total. Luckily, it is brand new, it is not used. A bunch of that shit online was used going for the same price. And that was the last thing I was gonna bullshit with because I don't wanna deal with other people's issues. So with that being said, we're gonna be throwing in this wiring harness because this wiring harness install, guess how much it's gonna cost over at Ford? I'll give you a second. $1,500. I was not doing that. So we're gonna be doing this install ourselves and hopefully everything goes right and we're gonna go ahead and throw this wiring harness and cross our fingers that it's not the PCM and it's actually the wiring harness. So with the hood open, the PCM sitting right in the very front over on the passenger side of the car, you will see that there's like a little plug that sits on the section section and what you're gonna do is just push this back, pull it out, it's gonna make its way all the way around over to right under the radiator hose and there's gonna be like a little clip right there. You're gonna unplug this and it's gonna loop its way all the way to the side of the engine and it's gonna make its way all the way to the back where there's gonna be some wires that we're gonna have to unplug. And moving our way to the other side of the engine, it's gonna spaghetti its way to the very top where it connects to your coils and other sensors as well but the one section that looks like it's gonna be pretty annoying is the section where you see that aluminum little film wrapped around that wire because that's one section we're gonna have to unplug and it looks like maybe it's an engine ground from what I saw one of the tabs were on it but I could very well be wrong So we just got done removing this one side of the wiring harness. We unplugged it from the PCM. We unplugged it from this little plug that was right below the radiator hose, removed everything off the side of the block. And then we actually right behind it, started plugging in the new wiring harness. Cause the last thing I want to do is forget exactly how I plugged everything in. So I thought it'd just be easier to follow this right behind when I'm unplugging that.
those of you guys that may be curious why I removed the intake manifold off the top of the engine, it was because I needed to be able to access the wires that were right below the intake manifold. There was absolutely no way I was gonna be able to unclip these while having this big fat thing right on top of it as well. So we have to remove those on one side and also replicate it to the same side as the other. And on top of that too, there are some wires in the back of the wiring harness that we're gonna have to tackle as well. And a lot of you guys might be looking at this right here. That was only temporary. I was not planning on keeping that there. I knew I was gonna be tackling and fighting this wiring harness at some point in the future. I do wanna mention briefly that these were a real big pain in the ass to get to. Not so much of the O2 sensor because I've done it so many times already, but the ones that I believe sit in the back of the cam sensors, I wanna say I'm not really entirely sure what they are. You have a clip right there that sits right on top of the harness. Not really too, too bad to get to, but I ended up breaking it off because I already had a new harness. And there was one that sits right there, right where you see the bolt on the far left, right above the aluminum little wrap piece. That right there, the actual tab is taped and it's upside down. So I found that it was easier to push the tab from up top where you see that hole and just push it straight out. Knowing I'm not gonna be using this harness again, if I break any of the clips, I'm not really too upset about it. But then again, would not like to, but if it does, it does. Another reason why not to get Chinese tools is because of this right here. All I was doing was trying to pull the little tab out from this little section here because I couldn't get it out and I cut it like a dummy. And then as I was pulling it, the flathead screwdriver bent. So this is why you don't get fake shit and you get real shit like a Craftsman. So a quick little rundown of what we have completed. It is plugged into the PCM, and last I mentioned, it was in the second slot. We ran into the left side, the passenger side of the engine bay, and we just ended up pushing everything in with the zip ties and the clips that were provided. Plugged everything into the back, and then this is where it kind of a little challenging in my opinion, because these weren't too, too difficult, but I found that if you put a little flathead under the side of the, the clip, and then you push down on the middle part, it'll pop up easy. And then here was a little bit more of a challenge over where the fuel injectors are, because these little red tabs don't push up too easy and I found that just since I'm replacing the entire harness I don't mind breaking the clips off so I ended up breaking them off just to save some time and by doing so it was a lot easier because a lot of this was brittle because you got to remember the intake manifold sits on top of this and a lot of that heat gets trapped under here so a lot of this stuff was already brittle as it is so replacing with some brand new stuff that was a lot easier to push in and clip out made it so much easier quick little update removed everything over the top over on the driver side and we just pretty much just scaggled everything over to the right because we're trying to make as much much room as we possibly can so we're just keep keep pushing everything over so we can be able to move this over at the same time I have not plugged in everything over here just yet and this side was a lot easier to do to unplug the coils and also the fuel injectors and then the back end of the block was a lot easier too because you're able to reach your hand in there and just pull back so a lot of that was really easy on this side compared to this side it just seems like whenever I do work on the passenger side of the car it just seems a like complete hell with that being said we're gonna go ahead and plug everything all back in over here and then we're gonna end up having to fight this demon down here that's plugged over behind the header and also closest to the cow which I feel like that's gonna be very difficult to do but I'll give you guys an update of exactly how it's gonna be once we have everything plugged in I'm wrong maybe I'm right I really didn't pay attention to this over on the other side but I noticed that this is the same color as that we also have a black one as well and the black one connects to the black one so if I am right then that means everything should be good and that means that they made it a lot easier on me because I don't have to figure out what exactly goes to what by starting the car and realizing there's a big issue Great example as to why I plugged in the brand new harness while doing the old harness is because I was trying to figure out for the past five minutes where this clip went. I was re-watching clips, I was looking at everything I did, I looked over the entire block, I was stretching the wire around to see exactly how far it would go until I found out that it actually plugs into the intake manifold and it plugs into the purge valve. So just to give you guys a heads up, I highly recommend just following along the path as I just did here. It made everything so much easier to go because even though it is plug and play and yes, 
yes, it is pretty self-explanatory. There are times where you can get tripped up, even when you are really focused, because I completely forgot that this plugged into the intake manifold, and I'm like, where the hell does this go? I cannot find another clip anywhere. The final piece of the puzzle is always the best. I took off the heat shield that sits right below the header, and of course, I'm gonna zoom in as best as I possibly can. If you can see right below that bolt, there is a hole inside the block and it's connected to a connector. And I don't know how in the hell I'm gonna be able to unplug that. A few minutes later. Believe it or not, two minutes in, I was able to get that out. I just used a flathead and wedged it into where the clip is. I pulled it and I also pulled on the wires and I was able to get it completely out. And it also came out with this grommet right here. So we're gonna have to make sure we put that back in when we put the new connector in. But the only issue I'm running into now is where this little aluminum piece is at. Actually some tape that's wrapped around it as well that connects to the block itself. Itself. So once we cut that this whole thing should just come right out and I believe that is the last piece before we plug everything back in Wow To be completely honest with you guys, I'm kind of nervous because I've never done this big of an electrical job before. Yeah, I've done like little LED shit, but like that had nothing to do with how the car operates. So I think I did everything good, but right now I am getting my brand new O2 sensor scanner thing. I ended up getting off Amazon for like $60, but I really needed a new one because the last one I had just was like $12 and it was a hunk of shit. I'm not really too confident in this. I'm really not. And the reason why I'm not too confident is because I don't know if this is the issue. Starting off, let's just hope the car starts up. And then after that, if it does start, then we gotta worry about if the O2 sensor is actually reading. Cause how I know that this will be right is if the O2 sensor starts reading with the air to fuel ratio on here. Let's just hope this thing does exactly what I'm hoping it does. So far, not looking promising. The air to fuel ratio is still stuck at 14.0, which I am really hoping that it just needs to be re Oh, it's working! Yes! Yes, that's it! That was it! That was fucking it! Oh my, oh, dude. Oh my God. I've been fighting this car for over a month, two months already. That was it. Putting in that brand new harness, I think did the I think it did it. I really do. I'm gonna be go jumping into this O2 scanner just to make sure that everything looks good. But man, that is just a great step in the right direction. And I think I found the answer to everyone's problem. Now I'm not saying it can't be the PCM. It very well can be the B P. Oh my God, I'm just so excited right now. It very well cannot be the P or. It very well could be the PCM. Definitely start with the wiring harness because that very well could be your culprit. I have never touched this wiring harness before with the exception of the O2 sensor. That just tells me that no codes are popping up currently right now. I plugged everything in correctly. We'll be going for a test drive here very shortly. So with that being said though, I feel like we finally cracked the code of exactly what is wrong with this car. And every single time I would find something on YouTube, or I'd find something on a forum, or I'd be asking people questions, no one knew the answer or else wouldn't even say shit. Like I would go on so many forums and every single person would have something on there where it sounds identical to the issue I'm dealing with. So it'd be like two years later and you'll see someone say, like, hey, did you figure it out? Crickets. Boys and girls, this shit is back to normal. When you are fighting a check engine light on your car, that's all you been. That's all you think about. I literally punished myself and my car by telling it, I'm like, you are not getting a wash. I'm not cleaning your engine bay. I am not cleaning anything around you until you want to act fucking normal and stop being a bitch. Finally, you're acting normal. You deserved your wash. I cleaned the engine bay. And you know what? She definitely deserves it. So let's hope and it stays this way. I feel pretty good about it right now because I haven't seen it this promising in a long time. So let's just give it some beans. Crack this baby open. Oh yeah, baby. This is what I've been waiting for. What I have been waiting for.
traveled maybe about, let's just say, a mile, maybe two if we're pushing it. And so far, the car is acting the way it should. This is just a great look for the next step forward because let's just say the light does come back on, which I'm really hoping it doesn't, fuck. And the air to fuel ratio is still working. At least now I know it very well could be a PCM issue. And the reason why I think it might be a PCM issue if it does come to that point is because now the air to fuel ratio is currently working on the car. So that means that's one thing that was tackled out of the way because this wiring harness is brand new, never been used. It's not off of another vehicle or another hunk of shit. It's strictly brand new. And the O2 sensor is brand new as well. Everything is pretty much new with the exception of the PCM. So at that point, I feel like that's the only other option it could be. But so far, it, I feel like if it was a PCM at the same time too, then there would be other things acting up over on the car. But so far, it seems pretty good. It's been a battle, it really has, but I feel like we won this one. Please, 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 please and share this on the forums because I'm telling you now there are going to be people out there dealing with this issue and the last thing I want them to do is struggle like how I did. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one.